point to wind up the debate up to Thank seven you, minutes. Thank you, Officer. Any, anyone wanted to see the arrogance and complacency of the SNP government? We saw it there. <laughs> Presiding Officer, the storm clouds that are looming over the horizon are bringing a winter crisis, a winter crisis that this SNP government is ill-prepared for. And even before they arrive, our surgeries, our hospitals, our care homes are ready on life support. Routine operations cancelled. Elderly people left in hospital beds, unable to be discharged. Cancer patients waiting too long for diagnosis and too long for treatment. Ambulances containing the sick and the dying, queuing outside hospitals. Patients waiting hours and sometimes days for life-saving treatment. Nursing and care shortages, undermining patient care. Hard-working, committed GPs, leaving in record numbers. The picture is bleak. And earlier this month, A and I won't give way, Earlier this month, A&E waiting times reached their worst level on record. Mr Yusuf, their worst level on record on your watch, so this is personal because you're the minister responsible. Uh, Mr Hoy, through the chair, please. Okay. But the minister yet again sits there with his fingers crossed, hoping in vain that the crisis that his government created will be averted. And as we've heard in this debate, the urgency is now. The NHS urgently needs resuscitation. It needs a proper recovery plan. I won't at the moment. It needs a proper cancer plan. It needs a proper workforce plan. It needs a government with the competence to deliver this. Just yesterday, the minister congratulated himself on A&E &E waiting times. But what is there to celebrate? A third of people are still waiting longer than four hours to be seen in our emergency departments. And any minor improvement on a record low is hardly something to be proud of. The minister, uh, not at the moment, the minister all too often pats himself on the back when he should be getting his finger out. If the SNP wants to remind patients of its record, then here it is. The longest cancer waiting times ever. The longest ambulance waiting times ever. The longest diagnostic waiting times ever. And the highest number of beds occupied due to delayed discharge ever. But from Humza Yusuf, all we get are empty promises and hollow words. Because he's an inaction man. But this winter, his inaction will cost lives. As Tess White warned, 40 additional lives could be lost within a single month as a result of A&E waiting times. In my own health board area, Edinburgh's Royal Infirmary was over capacity every hour of every day in August by an average of 80 people. But this government's failures extend way beyond our A&E units. Cancer Research UK... Well, Mr. I will give way at this point. Uh, uh, Mr Hoy has just talked about failures. I wonder if he could talk about the failures south of the border. Because Scotland's core a &E were 9.5 percentage points better than in England. Is that failure, Mr Hoy? I might remind him I stood for the Scottish Parliament to hold this government to account, and that's what I intend to do. So let's look. Let's look at Cancer Research UK. Don't take my word for it. Let's take Cancer Research UK. It warns that three quarters of patients requiring urgent cancer referral started treatment within six, 62 days during this quarter, well below the target and the worst since the start of the pandemic. I won't give way. But before the minister uses COVID as an excuse, let's forget that the 62-day target has not been met since 2012. And it's not just our NHS that's in crisis. And perhaps Mr Stewart might want to listen to this as the minister responsible. It's social care too. Make no mistake, the plan for a national care service in Scotland is a dangerous power grab. Many of the government's failures in our NHS are made worse by the failures in social care. Despite saying they would eradicate delayed discharge, no, I won't give way. I think we've heard enough from the SNP for today, thank you very much. Despite saying, despite saying, despite saying that they would, despite, despite, despite. Point of order, despite, Minister. I, each of the code or our Tories allowed to say these things, but SNP members not. Uh, you've, you've set an example. I, if I but can many... just remind the Chamber, if we could actually be serious for a moment, please, colleagues. The Code of Conduct is something that we must all take seriously at all times. And if we are addressing one another in, my, in, in terms that are not either courteous or respectful, then I think you know, we do need to question that. So please, at all times, treat one another with courtesy and respect. The debate will be all the better for it. Craig Hoy. I can understand why Mr Stewart didn't want to hear this, but he will hear this. Despite saying that they would eradicate delayed discharge, the SNP have made it worse. Care at home is in crisis. The workforce is demoralised. 
And rather than fixing the current crisis, they now propose a wholesale restructuring of the entire social care system. The deck chairs are being arranged on the Titanic. Minister, this move, this move of a national care service will waste scarce, scarce resources and it could cost lives. And these aren't my conclusions. These are the conclusions of key stakeholders. Take West Lothian IGB, which says the implementation of the bill is likely to cause significant disruption and uncertainty to service delivery and staffing. Or the Scottish Ambulance Service, which says there is genuine concern that this will have negative, a negative impact on communication, continuity of care, duplication of effort, and the ability for staff with an SES to be able to communicate effectively. Or COSLA, which warns that these, risks, that these plans risk repeating the cycle of successive reorganisations and come with a significant opportunity cost and disruption, but that they fail to address the fundamental and deep-rooted changes needed to integrate services at the front line. Minister, this is a disaster waiting to happen. And let's, let's not lose sight why some in this SNP government, as we read in the Sunday uh, Herald at the weekend, have taken their eye off the ball. Because the prize of independence is, in the SNP's eyes, a bigger prize than fixing the crisis in our NHS. This is government complacency on a scandalous scale. They are failing patients across Scotland, failing on A&E waiting times, failing on cancer treatment targets, failing on ambulance uh, waiting times, failing on routine waiting times for elective surgery, failing on NHS dentistry, failing on children and adolescent mental health, failing on delayed discharge, failing on workforce planning. And when patients die this winter, it will be Humza Youssef who must take responsibility for the stark result of these failures. Because, presiding officer, the problems we see across health and social care are problems created and problems ignored by the SNP government. A government distracted by the wrong priorities. An SNP government, which sadly and to its shame, cares more about dividing our nation than healing its people.